Looking for fast, cheap, and reliable coins, look no further than my sponsor, MuckReserve.com. Head over to MuckReserve.com. They're awesome to work with. They got super cheap, fast, and reliable coins. Make sure you use code Poodle at checkout for an additional 15% off your order. Everybody, it's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. And today, I'm going to be going over the most overpowered players in Madden 21. Now, for the most part, they are going to be ranked in order from 8 through 1. So, as I get closer to 1, obviously, they're going to get better. Starting 8, they're going to be the worst ones. Now, worst ones is kind of a... Kind of a blank statement considering they are the most overpowered players in the game. So yeah, the 8th best player in the game is the worst out of the top 8, but he's more than likely not even close to bad at all. But that's kind of how these rankings do work. But guys, I've made one of these lists in a while. I do plan to do best players at each position coming up pretty soon too. More than likely tomorrow. It's a much larger list, but I'm going to do the overpowered ones first. and we'll go over each position probably tomorrow. If you guys want to see that, like the video up. Give this video a big thumbs up as always. If you haven't already, comment down below. Let me know what's good, guys. And if you guys haven't subscribed... Head over to my reserve if you want these overpowered players and use code Poodle for 30% off. The holiday Christmas discounts are still going on. Take advantage, guys, because there's so many good players that you're going to need to keep progressing your team as the year goes on. And without coins, task quite impossible. But let's get into it, guys. Let's head over to the auction block. You know, this could take a little bit, so let's get to it. So the first guy on this list, guys, I usually type these in just because it's a bit easier that way than searching for them. But I'm probably going to not do that after this guy right here, depending on overalls. But Alvin Kamara is going to be the first guy on the list. Now, Alvin Kamara just got a new card. Kamara, Kamara, either or, guys. He just got a new card. 700K. Now, kind of surprising. I hope you guys did buy when I told you guys to buy. I said to buy after the presents. And a lot of people missed out on that opportunity, which is going to hinder their ability to get a lot of these cards. But Alvin Kamara is super solid. Now, is he the best running back in the game? No. But that's because another god running back was dropped. But Alvin Kamara is one of the best running backs in the game. He can be powered up. So here's the beauty of him. Powered up and Cam DePille have 95 speed, 96 excel, 96 agility, 91 carrying, 85, 86 catching, 95 change direction, 87 tackle, 98 break tackle. So yes, other people may prefer Bo, but they're both going to be good. Now, the difference between him and Bo, which may make you lean towards Kamara, Kamara's a lot smaller. I don't know, anyone played with Bo I just played with Kamara and guys like that. People like Kamara are shifty, they can get between the tackles easier, they get tripped up less, I feel like they have a better center of gravity. Bo Jackson's so tall, I feel like he gets tripped up a lot, gets easily grabbed because he's such a big body, his padding, I don't know what it is, but I always feel like Bo doesn't play too great for me. Now, on paper, Bo's going to be better, which we'll get to later, but Kamara is going to be much better at catching as well, so, yes, Bo may have plus one speed, but Kamara is shiftier, he's going to be smaller, lighter, going to be able to get between the tackles a bit easier, as well as he is going to have 85 catching, as well as some great route running, oh, he will have a 90 route running threshold, we put the right cam on him. So, and even an ADT bar running. So, there's a good chance that Kamara could be the most dominant running back in the game. Again, putting him here just because Bo just technically have some better stats that people are going to care about. But that's not to say that it changes anything. Next on the list, guys. Unless we do have Rod Woodson. Now, a lot of people are underrating Rod Woodson here with this pricing. Maybe people don't like his abilities, right? It's possible. But if you look at the stats. Pure stats. That's what we're basing these cards off of. Powered up and came to Broadway and gets to 97 overall. He will have 95 speed, 95 excel, 94 agility, 92 jumping. He will have like 95, 96 play rack. But here's the beauty of him. If you get him powered up all the way and came up all the way, he will have 99 man, 99 zone, and 99 press. He will be the only cornerback, I believe, in the game stock, which is locked down, that can get 99 everything coverage-wise. So... That's, that's pretty huge. He's going to be a completely threshold corner, which pretty much makes him end games. You could put Sprinter on him as well. Of course, that's not always the case, but you guys getting that out there. There's definitely a lot of potential for him to be super, super great for a decent amount of time, and especially right now. And then you have, and cornerback's also a dead position. you got to get that on there. Next, guys, we have Randy Moss. Now, Randy Moss's power-up is super expensive, which is kind of what's been hindering him. But his card itself is only 400K. It's not bad at all. Now, Randy Moss has to be on here. Now, like I said... For him to be super dominant, you really need that power up. That power up is going to be what gives him 99 deep route running and 90 medium route running. Because remember, without the power up, you can't get 90 medium route running without play fake. And if you do play fake, you can't get 99 deep route running. I don't know how crazy the difference is, but it definitely does give him another level of threshold more than likely. Not to mention, if you can do go deep, I'm pretty sure you also get spec catch up to 99 as well. And then as well with the speed. You are going to be able to get that up to a 96 plus sprinter 98 ish. So there's so much potential for this Randy Moss card, but you're going to need to get him powered up. Now that's kind of what hinders him, which is why he's not a bit higher on this list. If it wasn't power, if it wasn't power up and like dependent, he'd probably be in the top three or four. 
because he is power dependent, I had to put him down just a little bit here. But either way, guys, he's still great. He's a six for you know, he's six for four. He's huge. He's super fast. He can do everything on the field. He's the best wide receiver in the game. But like I said, I want that wide receiver. It's great, but there's a lot of other great cards in this list. Coming in next is Michael Strahan. Now, Michael Strahan just released today. 97 overall, Michael Strahan. He's 97 overall, right? You, without a power-up. That's the other thing. Uh, he's just an LTD card. You can pick him up. Now, 89 speed, 91 excel, 94 strength, 96 tackle, 91 play rec, 96 block shit, 97 power move, 91 finesse. Take a minute. Look at him. He is the most dominant guy on the defensive line in this game. Multiple reasons. He will get 99 power move with a uh, pass rush. He will get 99 block shit with run stuff. You choose. Would you rather run stuff or a pass rusher? Probably a pass rusher because you already have the 96 block shit. And not to mention, he gets the athleticism. He will have a 91 speed with sprinter. He, just, he will have above 90 speed. He'll be the greatest pass rusher in the game. One of the most athletic pass rushers in the game. Not to mention, he also has some good behind the card stats. Like a 97 impact blocking and a 95 power, which is going to be great for, you know, stretches, pitches, inside zone that he blows up, even outside zone that he blows up, any of them, can lay the boom. Or, of course, on a quarterback. Quarterback that's trying to get loose. He can hit him pretty hard, force some fumbles. Michael Strand, pretty insane. Just released today as well. So, gonna go. he's going to go down in price a bit more, but for the time being, it's going to be a little bit expensive. But again, you're going to get his price down eventually. Next, we had Deion Sanders. Now, Deion Sanders did just release a few days ago. Now, this Deion Sanders, guys, is pretty much a must-have on your team. Deion Sanders is coming in at number four on this list, primarily because he's a cornerback. Now, to explain that, the thing with cornerbacks is you can have Deion Sanders fully powered up, chemmed up God, right? If that, and you have him on the left side of the field, if that guy does a lot of his passes, his big place to the right side, or his run place to the right side, or first off, just a big passing place to the right side, a guy that maybe passes only 10 to 15 times a game and runs a lot, you may not notice Deion, right? Because Deion's horrible in the run game. He's going to get blocked so easily. He can't block shit, and he can't hit stick. So, Deion Sanders is a liability in the run game. And, like I said, if they mainly just run the ball game and start to stay efficient on the ground, you may not notice him. And then if they do, like, one or three, even one to five big play pa passing plays, if they go to the right side or the left side, you know, vice versa, opposite side, Deion, Deion may not notice. Or if it's a man-to-man, -man, he doesn't throw it to that one guy. So, I think with cornerbacks, you need, like, two to three great ones to really have that effect of a great secondary. One great one, you know, he'll get he'll make plays, but a smart user knows better than to consistently throw out that one great corner. They'll just go to the other ones or the weaker safety side. Point is, Deion's going to be great, though. Just by, That's why he's still on this list. Either way, he's going to have a 97 speed, 97 excel. He's going to have max man, max zone, max play rec. The only thing will be the press, but his press will get above 90, so that's why he's still going to be great. Like I said, if he was any other position, those level of stats are just ridiculous. Like, he has ridiculous stats. But, like I said, Deion's always like that, and that's the only issue is that he's going to be a liability in the run game and a liability if they don't throw it to him. So I can't make him the, me, the most overpowered. Next, we do have, guys, we have Isaiah Simmons. Now, Isaiah Simmons. Hopefully, you guys did pick him up when he was in the 300K range. Like I said, that's when things were really coming down. Isaiah Simmons is super, super solid. 95 speed, 94 excel, 91 tackle, 85 play rec, 92 pursuit, 89 man, 95 zone, 95 hit power. So he will get 99 zone coverage. With lockdown, he will get 99 zone coverage. Now, the thing with Isaiah Simmons is the reason he's going to be this high on the list is because he can do so many things. He can be left alone as a strong safety at 6 foot 4 with 95 speed with 99 zone. And 95 hit power. You instantly have the greatest strong safety in the game. Comfort strong safety, right? That can just sit back there with that speed, height, and everything. Or you could put Lurker on him. You could put like pick artists on him. You can use him in the box at linebacker. Now you have the greatest user linebacker slash user safety in the game. Or you can shoot gaps to him. Now you have the greatest gap shooter in the game. He can literally be the greatest anything at the game. He's so versatile. And that's what's good about him, too, is because remember, you run multiple defenses, right? You might not run only one defense. So let's say you start off on like the big nickel and you have Isaiah Simmons down in the box. He's a user. Then let's say they're here to kill you deep. You need more speed deep. It needs to get into a better, a better run fit. You know, a better run coverage. Then maybe you change to like a bear or something. And now Isaiah Simmons is back deep. Maybe you don't want him in the box anymore. Now you let him, you let him sit back there. Now you're using a safety, a different safety in the box just to stop the run. And then Isaiah Simmons stays back for any deep play action or something you need speed on. He can play literally anywhere in any defense, which is why he's so versatile. Highly recommend you scoop him up. And then next, guys, these last two guys. Are just ridiculous. I mean, every guy on this list, honestly, from Christmas is just ridiculous. But next, we got Bo Jackson. He just dropped, I believe, a day or a day ago. Was it yesterday? No, it was two days ago, right? Oh, I don't know. Day has been flying by. Bo Jackson. He, there's, not, there's no words for him, guys. He's just a, he's, he's a myth, right? 
Now, again, I like I said, with Bo being that tall and with that weight, there's been times where I have noticed him to be a bit clunky. I thought he was a bit taller, but he has been a bit clunky. Now, again, powered up and chemed up. He's going to have 96 speed, 97 excel, 95 agility, 94 carry, 95 change of direction. But the issue with him, like I said, I don't play well with him. I want him. He's expensive. I don't play well with him. Every time I have Bo, I do inside zones. If there's even a little gap, you know, to squeeze through, I feel like he gets grabbed and reached on from either side. I feel like he trips up a lot. I feel like he's literally top heavy. That's how he's always felt to me. But maybe I don't use him right. A lot of people have great success with him, so I can't knock him. He's great. Now, again, he's not going to have the greatest catching. Now, again, typically with running backs, you throw little swings, you throw little angle routes, you throw little things like open stuff. You typically don't use him as a receiver. But then again, in my, but in my specific scheme, I'm running back heavy. Like, I, I use him. I get him involved a lot in the passing game. Like, you know, route apprentice, you do Texas routes. I do flat routes. And a lot of the times, they may need to catch it. Not contested. But first, I mean, a good Texas route, a good run Texas route is great, which is why the route running on Kamar helps. And uh, again, on Texas route, sometimes you may be manned up on a linebacker, which means you'll, you'll be open, but you may get hit immediately after catching, which is why having a better route runner and catcher can help. But as a pure running back, pure stat-wise, Bo Jackson takes the cake here. Now, let's get to number one. Number one on this list is going to be something that we haven't seen all year. This is the first of this card this year, which is why it's so important, and that's Michael Vick. So the reason Michael Vick and Lamar weren't that good is because this year, the meta was pocket passers with some a little mobility right kind of like the kind of like last year steve young right like decent pocket passes that can kind of get it done on the ground just a little bit if you need to but they're really just gunslingers right now this now this year we got vic and we got um lamar but they didn't get gunslinger at the time and even if they don't the issue always was it was pretty much just the um the thresholds the old vic couldn't get passing thresholds couldn't get deep thresholds i couldn't get mid thresholds they couldn't get short right whichever one it was he couldn't get them. Now, I'm pretty sure it was medium and short. Now, the issue with that being is that if you can't do medium and short, pretty much, if you can't run with Vic, and you got to resort to, like, quick passing or quick reads, Michael Vick's going to throw some air and passes and really cost you the game. All the thresholds you do need, if you do play Vic on him, he will have the medium, the short, and the deep threshold, which does mean he will be able to go ahead and be a pocket passer, which is what everyone pretty much wanted, as well as having 96 speed powered up and 99 throw power. So he's going to have the max throw power threshold. He will have... The 96 speed, which is just, you know, that's crazy. Think about it. So pretty much, when you have guys like with Nair and them, like, you can stand in the pocket and make throws. People aren't really feeling you're on the ground, so they're playing maybe, like, three drop linemen. Maybe they're not putting on spies. Maybe they're just reading the running back. They don't, you know, read the quarterback. And they let you take off on. You get you get maybe five to ten yards, maybe three yards, maybe two yards. But with Vic, now, when, you get, when, you're, when you're lined up and, like, a gun trip's tight or something, they're, they're, they're reading the quarterback. They're using to the quarterback side. They're watching him. When you do a read option, they're reading the quarterback and letting the running back run free. When you scramble outside the pocket, they're clicking on ass. They're dropping someone to go pass rush you. When you when you run outside the pocket, they're using right to you. They're using that side. But then the thing with Vic is with dashing dead eye or whatever, you can just stop on a dime or keep running and just throw it down fit like fifty to seventy yards down the field. But if they stay back deep, you can cut it up and you can literally turn that into an eighty yard touchdown. Vic is so just versatile and dual. Obviously, people don't like the scramble archetype this year, but he's a much higher overall, so it does give you higher access to abilities. But guys, that pretty much does wrap up today's video. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy. If you need any of these cars, like I said, they are expensive. Head over to my reserve and pick up coin juice code Poodle for the holiday 30% off. Let me know down below if you guys end up picking up coins. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, comment, and like. I'm out. Peace.